whether it's a healthy, healthy river or not. We've been working with a keen group of students from Canvas Town School this morning and they've been monitoring their hour with Anna here who is an environmental educator with the Marlborough District Council. So Anna, tell us a bit about the monitoring process. Well, we've, we've been monitoring a few different things. We measured how clear the water is, water clarity. Uh, we measured the water temperature. Uh, we measured flow, which uh, so how fast the water's moving along in the hour, and we measured or we looked at the bugs that are living in the river, so the creepy crawlies or macroinvertebrates that are living amongst the stones. Right, so four things that you've been measuring or recording information about. I can assume that temperature, you just need a thermometer, but tell us a bit about the other equipment that you might need for this monitoring. Well, for water clarity, we use a thing called a clarity tube. It's just a metre long perspex tube that we fill up with water. Um, it has a little window in one end for the students to look through. Uh, and then we use a black magnet that we um, just gradually move away from the student's eye and then they can see how far through the water column they can see. So it's just like seeing how a fish, how far a fish can see through the water. Excellent. Yeah, um, and, the, yeah. and the flow, how fast the water's moving, that oh, yeah. must be a fun activity. Yeah, the kids love that one. Um, so what we do is we measure how long it takes a tennis ball to float 10 metres down the, the river and then we do a little bit of maths to work out how many metres per second uh, the water's moving along at. Yeah, and for the creepy crawlies, um, that's when we use our nets. We go out, we do uh, a kick sample, so that's where we kick our feet um, to disturb the stones and that makes the little bugs float up from their homes under and around the rocks and into our nets. And then we put them into a white tray and that just allows us to see them against a white background because they're very camouflaged. Yeah. yeah, and there must be some bugs that are a good sign and other ones that maybe aren't such a good sign? Oh definitely, so the bug community that's living there tells us a lot about the health of, of the awa. So um, we use this chart um, to help us with that. This is in the top of our bug boxes and the students look really hard at the little bugs. They're a lot smaller than this so they have to look really close and try and match them up with these pictures and then they can sort them into um, their different groups. So the way this works is the bugs down the bottom, they're really tolerant bugs like worms and snails. They can survive in pretty much any water, even if it's really polluted and if there's not much oxygen there. Um, as we move up the chart, the bugs get more and more sensitive. And these ones up the top, the mayflies and the stoneflies, they need really clean water with lots of oxygen to survive. So if we're finding these ones at the top, that's a really good sign that the hour is really healthy. And another good sign is when we get a whole variety of bugs, so a lot of different ones there. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to finding out what results the students have discovered this morning. So let's yeah. go and have a chat with them, eh? Okay. Okay. Okay, Tessa, looks like you've been looking for bugs, critters. What did you find? Um, we found lots of mayflies and caddisflies and they make our river really healthy and we also found a dobson fly, um, a stick bug and a couple of worms. So it's looking like the R was nice and healthy. Hey, thank you. We'll see what else we've discovered. Okay, Maddie, you have been looking at temperature this morning. So how did you go about measuring temperature? Um, I took the thermometer out and I... Um, left it in the water for one minute and when I pulled it up it read 15 degrees. 15 degrees, is that good? Um, it's good but not amazing. Right, and why is it not amazing? Um, because when it's warm the fish get really stressed. Right, so they like it nice and cold. Hey, thanks Maddie. Alright, what else have we discovered this morning? This here. I saw you catching that tennis ball on the hour measuring the flow of the river. What did you find out? I found out the tennis ball was going 10 metres down and it took 13 seconds and seven, um, almost half of a um, metre per second. Right, so that's pretty quick isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's a good sign that our hour is going nice and fast, nice healthy hour. Thanks Chris. Electra. Last but not least, you were measuring the clarity, how clear the water is. What did you find out? That it wasn't 
very clear and it was not the best and it wasn't the worst. It was between 50 centimetres and 90 centimetres and we got up to 70 centimetres. When you averaged it. Cool, so why wasn't it that great at the moment? It's because we had a flood not that long ago. Right, so that makes sense. So when the water goes down, it might be a bit clearer. Hey, thanks, Electric. Great job. So today we've discovered quite a bit about the health of this hour, and we could monitor it over time to find out if it changes at all. And it might be something that you want to do in an hour near you. Kia ora.